Good morning. Thank you again for joining us this morning as we have some time to worship our Lord and Savior this morning. This Sunday is Palm Sunday, and it's always a Sunday of celebration, as we remember, leading into Passion Week, what Christ has done for us on the cross. We're going to begin with a couple of songs of praise just before we pray, just after we pray. And uh, we'll also be having a time of worship at the end after our sermon this morning to, to bring praise and glory to our God. Before we begin to do all that, just a couple of announcements to let you know about. Uh, we had planned on doing uh, a potluck time. Obviously, that's not happening because of the whole coronavirus uh, crisis going on. But uh, as soon as we have uh, a gathering together, we'll plan to meet together for potluck. Uh, generally, we do that at the end of the month. But uh, I think it would be good when we can actually meet together again to celebrate together by having a meal together. So uh, once we have word of when we can meet in our at the Heritage Center again, we'll plan for that. If you're not a part of a church and you're watching us for the first time, we are New Life Christian Community, and we thank you for joining us this morning in this time we have to worship and praise God together. If you don't have a home church, we invite you to visit our website, nlchristiancommunity.com. And there's a lot of information on our website about who we are as a church and why we, we exist. And so if you don't have a home church, we'd love to invite you to come and join us when we finally have a live service at the Heritage Center again. It is good to come together, even though it's over the internet, to worship God together. And so let's pray and invite the Lord to meet with us this morning. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for this time we have to gather together over the internet to worship and praise you, Lord God. Lord, it doesn't matter where we're at right now, we can come together through this medium to worship and bring honor and glory to you. So, Lord God, as we've come to meet with you, meet with us this morning, Lord God. May we sing these songs of praise in honor and glory to you in your name. As we hear from your word, may you speak to us and draw us closer to you. And, Lord, as we spend time in prayer, may we hear from you and may you hear our prayers too. God, you are a wonderful and awesome God. You are worthy of all praise and thanksgiving. So, Lord, we come before you to give praise to you now. For these things we pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's sing praises to our King this morning. Praises rising, the eyes are turning to you we turn to you hope is stirring hearts are yearning for you we long for you cause when we see you find strength to face the day in your presence all our fears are washed away washed away Hosanna Hosanna you are the God who saves us worthy of all praises Hosanna Hosanna come have your way among us we welcome you here Lord Jesus hear the sound of hearts returning Turn to you in your kingdom, broken lives are made new. You make us new, because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, 
washed away Hosanna Hosanna You are the God who saves us Worthy of all our praises Hosanna Hosanna Come have your way among us We welcome you here, Lord Jesus Hosanna 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 Over all the earth you reign on high Every mountain stream, every sunset sky But my one request, Lord, my only aim Is that you reign in me again Lord, reign in me, reign in your power Over all my dreams, in my darkest hour You are the Lord of all I am So won't you reign in me again Over every thought Over every word May my life reflect The beauty of my Lord Cause you mean more to me Than any earthly thing so won't you reign in me again, Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again, Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again? So won't you reign in me again? So won't you reign in me again? There's a couple of words in this song here. I'm going to ask Caleb just to go back to um, I think it's the course here. It is the course. If you go one of the slides of the course there, Caleb. Look at the words here again. Um, it says, The Lord reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams in my darkest hour. You are the Lord of all I am, so won't you reign in me again? I think these are wonderful words for us to sing this morning, particularly that line, over all my dreams in my darkest hour. We seem to be in a darkest hour time in around the world with this whole crisis. Yet it's still a time we can still praise God. We know that God is in control of all things, and so we can give him praise still. Whether we face sickness or death or life or health, either way, God is with us if we have turned to him and accepted him as Lord and Savior. There's great hope for us. And even this day being Palm Sunday, a reminder of preparation of what Christ has done for us. We know that we can trust in God to carry us through our darkest hour. Let's pray again and give thanks to God for his love. Lord God, again, we thank you that we've been able to praise your name in these couple of songs, Lord. And even, Lord, it is a dark hour in this time, Lord. We thank you and praise you that you love us and care for us. Lord, we don't understand why this is happening right now, but Lord, we know you are in control of all things. That Lord, you say in your word that you bring all things, that you use all things to your honor and glory, and that you use all things to draw us closer to you. So Lord God, we thank you for what you're going to do through this whole situation, and we trust you in this dark hour. 
For these things are printed in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. One of the things we do as a church is we often have a time of communion, and we're not doing that today, but uh, we've had a couple of people from our church saying, if we miss having communion, it's a tradition of our church to do it every Sunday as a reminder, early on in the service, a reminder what Christ has done for us and why we gather to worship and praise his name. So next Sunday, especially with it being Easter, we're going to have a time of communion together. And even though we can't pre prepare for you, uh, we invite you to prepare in this way, to have a, a glass or a small cup of juice for each person in your family and a piece of bread that we can partake of communion together as we walk through that time of communion together. And uh, we'll try to do that every Sunday from that point going forward and including when we start to meet together face-to-face -face at the Heritage Center. So I just want to make that note for you um, so we can, even though we're not together face-to-face, -face, we can still bring honor and glory to God in remembering what he has done through the act of communion together. We're going to go to prayer, but before we do, if you have children with you, I want to invite you to invite them to come and join us, uh, if not already, um, because after our prayer time, we're going to do a special ch children's moment, and uh, you won't want to miss this time. So I invite your children to come join us. But first, be real, spend some time in prayer together. I invite you, even in the comments, as the, the Facebook Live is happening, I invite you to write, even write your comments of prayers as well as we, as we pray together. And uh, I can't read those comments right now, but we'll read them afterwards and we'll pray with you through those comments as well. A couple of things we want to pray for. First of all, again, is this whole COVID-19 um, crisis going on. The other thing we want to be praying for is our church and our whole community as well. Uh, we are in a, a time where there's going to be a great opportunity for us as the church to reach the lost with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so it's a time for us to prepare as well, to be ready to be able to share the gospel to those who are lost. Even now, some of us are having conversations with people who aren't believers yet, but it's opening opportunities to share the gospel. And so if you don't know how to share the gospel, I encourage you to be equipped. And uh, I can talk with you through the comments or direct message me. I can share how you can be equipped to share the gospel. We're going to pray for the lost. We're going to pray for our community, but also for us as the church, the greater church, being prepared for the harvest that God's about to bring because of this whole crisis. Anything else that God brings to your heart and mind to pray for, I invite you to pray for that as well. Let's pray together. Lord God, you're an awesome and mighty God, and nothing is too difficult for you. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are going to guide us in how to pray right now too. So we pray according to the Father's will. Lord God, we pray about this whole COVID-19 crisis. Lord, again, we don't understand why this is happening, but Lord, we pray your protection upon each of us as brothers and sisters in Christ, your children. We also pray, Lord, that you use this to draw many more people to come to faith in you, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you that you have a perfect plan in this situation. Lord, we also pray, too, for our communities, for those of us who are in the Onaway area. We specifically pray for Onaway in our area, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that there would be many who would come to faith in you because of this time, that people would seek you and find you. Lord, we pray for our church, New Life Christian Community, Lord, that we would be ready and prepared for the harvest that's about to happen. We pray that for every church in our area, Lord God, too, that we would all be ready for the whole greater church around the world, Lord God. We pray that we would be all ready to share your good news, to come alongside and encourage people to know you, because... Lord, in you there are true answers, in you there is true peace, and in you there is hope. So, Lord God, we pray that we as a church would be ready. Lord, we pray, too, for the Sunday when we finally are able to meet face-to-face -face in our own church buildings or rental facilities. We pray, Lord God, that we would see a new group of people coming into our churches to hear the gospel and receive your gift of salvation. Lord, we think of those two who are sick and ill right now, Lord, because of this disease. Lord, we pray that you'd heal them, Lord God. Lord, part of this virus 
that scares us, especially those of us who have lung issues, Lord. We pray for protection for those who have breathing issues, Lord God. And Lord, we pray for healing of each person who is sick with this, Lord God. Lord, because of the disease, all people have passed away too, Lord. Lord, I think of those who I've seen online who are grieving because of a loss of a spouse, whether it be because of this disease or not, for or some other reason, Lord. We just pray, Lord, for comfort in this time. Especially those who are widows or widowers who are home alone and are grieving this time, Lord God. We just pray, Lord, that they would know that you are there, that you love them, that in them, there's in you, there's true comfort. Even though they grieve, even though they're in a dark hour, Lord, you are there and love them. Lord, if they don't know you, Lord, I pray that they come to faith in you. And those who do, Lord, may they be comforted. God, you are a wonderful and awesome God. And we know that you're going to do an amazing thing through this situation. We give you praise and honor and glory for what you're about to do. Lord, we lift up other prayers to you, to you, Lord, things that are on our hearts and minds. And Lord, we entrust all those things in what we just prayed for to you, to you. We pray these by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the will of the Father, and in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, this morning I have a special children's moment for our kids. And uh, do you guys know what Palm Sunday is about? For those who are watching online, uh, parents, if you want to file out the answer for your kids online too, um, that's that's great and fine too. But um, what is, do you guys know what Palm Sunday is for? Yes. What is it? For praise of God, okay. That's that's often what's thought of when it comes to Palm Sunday is is praising God, right? And we're gonna have some more time of praise of song in a few moments after the sermon. But there's there's something I want to share with you. I I'm gonna find it here in one of my pockets. No, it's not in that pocket. It's oh here it is. I have here a little red napkin. You all see that? It's it's unique. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so there's this red handkerchief here, and it represents something. Do you have an idea what it would represent? Good one. Represents Jesus' blood. That's right. Palm Sunday, though, is in preparation for Easter. And in the passage we're going to read about in a few moments here, there's something special and important about this passage. Later in the passage, it talks about people who are praising God as Jesus comes into Jerusalem. And they're waving palm branches around, they're laying them on the ground, and they're putting their jackets, their robes on the ground as Jesus rides in a donkey coming into Jerusalem. And they're saying and shouting words of praise. They're shouting, Hosanna. Do you know what Hosanna means? Praise him. It actually doesn't mean praise him. As we'll see in the sermon, what it actually means, it means a cry. To cry out. It's calling for, we need to be saved. So when we look at this red handkerchief, it actually doesn't represent Jesus' blood. It actually represents our sins because the Bible talks about how our sins are red as scarlet. But that's why Jesus came into Jerusalem in that time in preparation for when he would die on the cross for our sins. So this handkerchief represents sin. So here's the thing. Jesus came to die on the cross for our sins, right? Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's a little bit harder with the smaller camera. Anyway, Jesus came and died on the cross. Here's the thing. We're going into actually a time called Passover as well. And remember sacrifices? Sacrifices happened to cover one's sin. But Jesus died to take sin away. So when Jesus died, he died for our sins. He took our sins away. So even though it's Palm Sunday, it's a great reminder to us that even when we, when we celebrate Palm Sunday, 
is a reminder pointing to what Christ is going to do and what he did for us on the cross. So remember, Jesus died on the cross. He loves us. And so when we sing Hosanna, it is actually a cry out to God to save us. That's what he was going to do when he came into, into Jerusalem. And we'll talk a little bit more about that to understand that passage a bit more. But God loves us so much that he would die on the cross to wash our sins away, to take it away completely. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you so much for our children. The wonderful children they are, how you have blessed us. God, you say in your word that blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them, that children are a blessing. So we thank you for our children, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, though, that our children would come and seek you with their whole hearts too. Lord, give us as parents wisdom in how to train them up in your ways, to remind them and to teach them of the great love you have for us, the great love that you've shown to us by dying on the cross for our sins. God, you're an awesome and wonderful God. Thank you not only for our children, but thank you that you've called us to be your children. For these things we pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. I'm going to invite you now to turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. And I'll be reading to you from the English English Standard Version. Matthew chapter 21, verse 1 through 11. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble, and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, a foil of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went on the road, or, and the crowds went before him, and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And we had entered Jerusalem. The whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you so much for these words, this reminder as we celebrate Palm Sunday, that day beginning the week of passion when you would be led to the cross and die for our sins. Lord, we thank you for these words and we ask you, Lord God, to speak to us that you would teach us now as we study these words together. Lord God, we ask you to open our ears to hear from you, open our eyes to see you, and give us the courage to put into practice what you teach us today. For these things we're praying, come in, for these things we're praying in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. I want to begin with a question, and, and my family here can answer this question out loud, but if you're online, we invite you to answer this question as well. Type it in the comments. The question I have asked for you this morning is, what makes something worthy to be praised? I'll give you a moment to think about that. What makes something worthy to be praised? Any ideas? Doing a good deed? Obedience, yeah, <laughs> like you said, like when your dog obeys you, it's, that's nice, right? <laughs> okay, so worthy of praise, that's yeah, in the context of thinking about our pets, okay? What makes someone worthy of praise? 
Any other ideas? When they do something well with excellence? Yeah. We think of probably something like music, right? Or acting. There's awards and rewards for for people in the entertainment industry when they've done a good job, right? Or like when our kids, when we're proud of our kids for doing something, we praise them. Um, praise them for what they've done. Okay, so something done well. Any other idea of what makes someone worthy of praise? No other ideas? Well, those of you who left comments online here, thank you. I will look at them later and, and we'll give you a thumbs up for, for answering. What makes someone worthy of praise? This morning we actually look at two things in our passage here that speaks of what makes God worthy of praise. Now, there's more than just these two things that will make God worthy of praise, but there's two things specifically in this passage that teaches us two of the ways that God is worthy to be praised. In our passage this morning, it mentions about how Jesus is walking with his disciples and they're coming up to a town called Bethphage. It's a small town, just outside of Jerusalem, and they're getting coming close to Jerusalem at this point. And I actually have some pictures here to give you a little bit of an idea with where Bethphage is and what it looks like today. So on the screen you'll see here, here's Bethany. And then our passage actually earlier talks about that Jesus was leaving from Bethany to go to Jerusalem. So they had left from Bethany here, and here's Bethphage. They're actually on the top of what's called the Mount of Olives. And it's at a point where they're just about to come down into the valley and to come into Jerusalem and even to the Temple Mount where the temple is. And as you can see in this map here, here's the temple. All this here is Jerusalem. So it's a pretty large area. But you have to remember, though, too, back in this day and age, a large city wasn't like millions of people. It was in the thousands. So like we think of a big city today being over a million. Edmonton is over about a million people, maybe over. Calgary is more than a million for sure. Cities weren't that big in that time period, but still the largest center in the area. So here's Bethphage. On this next picture here, too, it's, sorry, it's a little bit distorted, but it kind of gives you another picture of, here's again, here's Bethany, there's Bethphage. There's the valley that goes down and into Jerusalem and where the Temple Mount is. Here's a picture of Bethphage today. Kind of a beautiful. Beautiful view, isn't it? And one more, a little closer up picture. As a more of a modern picture of Bethphage, you can tell that there's a little bit more modern buildings there. Obviously, it's not ruins, um, but it's, it's a beautiful area in Jerusalem. This is important because it's talking about Jesus' journey into Jerusalem in preparation for the Passover and for a sacrifice on the cross. So there's two things we're going to look at this morning, two reasons why Jesus is worthy of praise. The first you'll see on the screen already, Jesus is worthy of praise because he fulfills prophecy. Because he fulfills prophecy. Listen to these words in beginning verse 2. Then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the valley in front of you, and immediately you'll find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them with me, to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, a foil of a beast of burden. Here, Jesus gives a prophecy, first of all, because he knows of this prophecy that we have from the Old Testament of what Jesus was about to fulfill here. But he tells them, go ahead, you're going to come across a poem, there's going to be a donkey and a colt tied there want you to grab them, to bring them to me. And he said, 
tell whoever asks about this to say the master needs them. So they go and do that. And it happens exactly as Jesus tells them. They find this colt and this donkey tied together and they bring them to Jesus. All of this is to fulfill the words that we just read in verse 5. And this prophecy actually comes from Zechariah 9, verse 9. This is one of the 55 prophecies that Jesus fulfills about himself. There's these 55 prophecies throughout the Old Testament that speak to the Messiah coming, the one who would save us from our sins. Now, the Israelites had the wrong idea, though. They thought the Messiah was going to save them from Roman rule. And we'll talk about that more in a few moments. But Jesus is the Messiah. He was the one fulfilling this prophecy right here. Now, this is one of those prophecies that's not in Jesus' control, really. Yes, he is God. He has all power and all authority. But as an individual, he's not manipulating things to fulfill his prophecy. He just tells his disciples, go, there's going to find these, this colt and donkey, bring them to me, and then it fulfills what was prophesied in Zechariah 9, verse 9. So it shows that Jesus is worthy to be praised because he fulfills prophecy. Every prophecy that has been written about the Messiah, Jesus has fulfilled. Now, there's a list of 55 prophecies that Jesus fulfilled. And that's part of our reasoning that to understand that Jesus is worthy to be praised because he fulfills every one. I'm not going to list them right now for you because there's too many of them to list for you. And the, But if you like, I can leave in the comments later or you can message me and I'll send the whole list to you, including the verses that shows that each of those prophecies have been fulfilled. Again, it's an amazing amount, 55 prophecies just about Jesus alone, and he fulfills every single one of them. That shows that Jesus is worthy to be praised. <clears throat> so that's the first reason why Jesus is worthy to be praised. In our passage, the second reason that Jesus is worthy to be praised is because he saves us from our sins. Because he saves us from our sins. Beginning in verse 8, we see that Jesus is starting to come into Jerusalem, and people are all excited they see Jesus coming. They recognize him as the Messiah. The disciples had already taken their cloaks and put it on top of the donkey and the colt. And it was a sign of respect to Jesus. It was a sign of showing that he was royalty, that he was king of Israel. Now, he hadn't been physically anointed as king, but we know that he was king of, G of, of Israel, king of all creation. So they do this as a sign of homage to a king, to the homage to Jesus. And as he's coming on this donkey and colt into Jerusalem, the people around are shouting and cheering. They're putting their own cloaks, some of them, and some of them taking palm branches off the trees and laying them on the ground as the donkey comes into Jerusalem with Jesus riding the donkey and colt. This, again, is a sign that Israel recognizes that Jesus is the Messiah. They recognize him as king of Israel. And what's interesting, as they're shouting, people are asking, well, who is this? And they say that this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth, of Galilee. Sadly, they don't really recognize the whole fullness of who Jesus is. He's not just a great prophet, but he is king of all. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Yes, he is their king, he is their Messiah, but he is the savior of the whole world. But they still show honor to Jesus. And they shout these words, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. These words are actually a quote from Psalm 118, verse 26. And this verse here is actually known as one of the Hallel hymns associated with Passover. Remember, when Jesus is coming to Jerusalem, they're about to partake and celebrate the Passover feast. The Passover feast, you might remember, is a feast that was done that Israel did as remembrance of God taking them out of Egypt. The last night that Israel was in Egypt, 
God had last had had the last plague of ten come upon Egypt. God had given instructions to Moses to tell the people of Israel, take a lamb, a perfect unblemished lamb, and sacrifice it. They were to take the blood from the lamb and spread it on the doorposts around the door of the house. Then they were also to take the lamb and they were to eat in a way as if they are ready to flee the house quickly. Because that night, the angel of death was going to come over Egypt. And any house that would not have the blood on those doorposts, the firstborn of that household, of every human and every animal would die. It was that night that changed things with Pharaoh. And Pharaoh the next morning told Moses, take your people and go and worship your God in the desert. It was the night that God had freed Israel. That's what they celebrate, the Jewish people, when they celebrate Passover. And it's something for us as Christians to remember too that reminds us of how great God is. Here at this Passover time though, Jesus was about to become the perfect lamb to be the perfect sacrifice for our sins. So it was fitting that these people would say these words, that they'd be crying out, Hosanna to God in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. There's a couple of words here that are important for us to understand here. The first is Lord. The Jewish people here are crying out and calling Jesus Lord. That is significant here. The word Lord here is the Greek word Kurios, which means one who is in charge by virtue of possession. It also means one who is in a position of authority. So the nation of Israel recognizes Jesus is in a place of authority. He was not in a place of authority given by man because he was not king over Israel. He was not the high priest. But he was in a place of authority because the father placed him there. So it was fitting for the nation of Israel to cry out and call him Lord. The second word, Hosanna, which we talked about in our children's moment, means this. It's, it's a cry for help. It's a cry to save us. The Jewish people recognized and understood they need to be saved, but in a different way than God had intended. See, the Jewish people at this time were under the rule of the Roman people. They were slaves to the Roman. And so they wanted to be freed from the Roman occupation of Israel. So their cry, save us, save us, was not because they wanted to save him from their sins, is they wanted to be freed from the Roman Empire. They had a wrong idea of what Jesus was going to save them from, to save all of mankind from. But yet, it was still appropriate for them to cry out, Hosanna. Yes, it was shouts of praise, but a call Jesus, save us. Save us from our oppressors. But Jesus was coming to save from the oppressors, all right, but from the oppressor of sin. Here's how Jesus saves. And this, again, leads us towards Easter, Resurrection Sunday, that we're going to celebrate later this week. Jesus saves by his death. Romans 6, verse 5 through 11 says this. For if we have been united with him in death like this, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now we have died with Christ. We believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin. Once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is why Jesus came. He came to die, to save us by his death. Somehow I didn't get this on, on the next point here, but there's one other thing here that Jesus saves us by. 
And that is, he saves us by his resurrection. He saves us by his death and by his resurrection. His death was to wash our sins away for forgiveness of sins, but he still had to conquer not just sin, but also death and the grave. And that's why he was raised, raised from the dead for us. That's why he was resurrected. Romans 6 verse 5 says, For we have not been unified with him in the death like his. We shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Jesus came as Messiah, as King, as Lord and Savior of us all, dying on the cross to conquer and pay for the debt of our sin. He did that so we can be saved from our sins, so that we would really truly understand the fullness of who he was. Just not some great prophet, just not king over Israel, but the King of kings and Lord of lords who would die who loved us so much to offer himself for our salvation. So because of his death and resurrection, he can offer us the free gift of salvation, something that is truly worthy to be praised. So Jesus is worthy to be praised because he saved us from our sins. If you're one who is listening to this and who have never committed their lives to Christ, who never made the confession of faith, Maybe you're hearing these words and wondering, okay, well, sin, okay, what is sin? Well, sin is this. Sin means to miss the mark. It means to miss God's standard. Whenever we sin against God, we're missing his standard. Whether you've lied, whether you've stolen, whether you've cheated, whether you've got, used God's name in vain or not, and there's a few other sins that God tells us hurts our relationship with him and also with other people. God tells us we are all we all are under sin. Romans 3:23 says for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all deserve eternity in hell for our sin. But Jesus willing came and died on the cross for us. So if you're listening to this and you're being convicted and saying I, I need Jesus to forgive me. All you need to do is this. Is to believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. That is making a confession of that, saying, Lord Jesus, I understand and believe that I'm a sinner. I believe and understand there is nothing I can do on my own, but it's through your sacrifice on the cross that I can be saved. If you say those words and believe that, place your faith in him, and then also say to him, Lord Jesus, from this point forward, I will surrender my life to you, that I will live my life for you until you return and call me home to heaven. If you do that, God's Word tells us you are saved from your sins. And then you need to be a part of a good local body of believers who encourage you to grow in your faith. Take a Bible, study and read it, spend time in prayer daily, and find, as I said, a good church that preaches and teaches God's Word to help you encourage you to grow in faith. Not just on Sundays, but being part of a community that helps you grow in faith and love and service to God. We must know the reasons that Jesus is worthy to be praised. In our passage this morning, these are two of them. He's worthy to be praised because he fulfills every single prophecy laid out about him and because he saves us from our sins. What a wonderful God who would love us so much that would pay the cost for our sins. Truly that shows he's worthy to be praised. Take a moment to imagine this. Close your eyes. Imagine someday when we're called to heaven. Imagine what they'll be like to stand before God, to know that our sins are forgiven, and that we don't have to face eternity in hell, but we can stand in God's presence for eternity with knowing true peace, true hope, knowing that we have a true future, that we have eternity with God, free of pain and suffering, free of things like COVID-19, free of any pain or illness we'll face. in the awesome presence of God, knowing that we are eternally loved. Then we, as the whole church, will bring awesome glory and praise to him because God is worthy of this praise. This is the gospel, that Jesus will come and die and set us free from our sins, to save us from eternity in hell. Truly, we should be crying out, Hosanna 
who prays to God, crying out to him, save us, because he has saved us. I want to encourage us to two points of action this morning. First is this, cry out to Jesus. If you're not a Christian, cry out to Jesus and ask him to forgive your sins. If you are a Christian, cry out to God and say, Lord Jesus, thank you that you have saved me from my sins. And the second point of action is this, give praise and glory to God. God is so awesome, and he loves you so much. That's why we should take these steps of action this morning, to give glory and praise to God. Also, I want to encourage you this week to spend time reading through Matthew 21, verse 1 through 11 again, studying these words further, meditating upon these words, and allow God to speak to you further in this passage. And remember, uh, verse 9. Let me read these words to you again, the words to memorize this week. The crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I want to give this warning to you this morning. If you do not heed these words, you'll be in danger of missing Jesus' gift of salvation. If you're not a believer, don't miss the wonderful gift that God has for you to be free of the burden of guilt of sin, to know that you can be free of it. But here's the positive. If you do heed these words, you will have eternal life with Jesus in heaven. What a wonderful thing to know that we can have that eternity with heaven in heaven with God. Do you want to be safe from your sins and the guilt thereof? Then cry, Hosanna, to Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for your love and your grace and how mighty you are. How you love each one of us so much that you would die on the cross for our sins. You are the only one who is worthy to be praised, Lord God, the only one who is worthy to be to, for us to shout out to you and say, Hosanna, save us. And Lord God, we thank you and praise you that you are the one who has saved us. Lord God, we take this time now to praise you in song again because you are worthy of praise. Lord, we want to lift our voices in praise to you, Lord God. Lord, and however you want us, the Holy Spirit wants us to worship you right now. May we worship you. If it's on our knees, on our face, if it's shouting out a song of praise right now, if it's dancing before you with our hands lift high or clapping, or just sitting listening to the words of these songs, Lord, may we worship you and bring glory to you in your name. Because, God, you are a good God. Lord God, we love you. And we love you now as we sing these songs of praise to you. Amen. The same is technical difficulty you're saying. Sorry about that, my batteries almost died. <laughs> Let's praise our Lord and Savior with these next couple, next few songs to bring praise and glory to him and his name. of man I will never ever stand for the kingdoms of this world I'll never give my heart away or shout my praise my allegiance and devotion my heart's desire and all emotion 
go to serve the man who died upon that tree. Only a God like you could be worthy of my praise and all my hope and faith. To only a king of all kings Do I bow my knee and sing Give my everything To only my maker, my father, my savior Redeemer, restorer, rebuilder, rewarder To only a God like you Do I give my praise For the praises of man, I will never ever stand. For the kingdoms of this world, I'll never give my heart away or shout my praise. My allegiance and devotion, my heart's desire and all emotions. Go to serve the man who died upon that tree. Only a God like you could be worthy of my praise and all my hope and faith. To only a king of all kings do I bow my knee and sing, give my everything. To only my Maker, my Father, my Savior, Redeemer, Restorer, Rebuilder, Rewarder. To only a God like you do I give my praise. Only a God like you, only a God like you. 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 To only my Maker, my Father, my Savior, Redeemer, Restorer, Rebuilder, Rewarder. To only a God like you. Do I give my praise? Do I give my praise? Do I give my praise? Let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be a sign We are here for you We are here for you Let your breath come from heaven Fill our hearts with your life we are here for you. We are here for you. To you our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy. Only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. Let our shout be your anthem, your renown. Fill the skies, we are here for you. We are here for you. Let your word move in power. Let what's dead come to life. We are here for you. We 
are here for you. To you our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden, you are our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy, God, let your fire fall down. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise, Almighty God of love. Be welcome in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise, Almighty God of love. Be welcome in this place. Let every heart adore. Let every soul awake, Almighty God of love. Be welcome in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcome in this place. Before the world was made, before you spoke it to be you were the king of kings yeah you were yeah you were and now you're reigning still in throne above all things angels and saints cry out we join them as we sing glory to god glory to god glory to god forever Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. Creator God, you gave me breath so I could praise your great and matchless name. All my days, all my days, so let my whole life be a blazing offering. A life that shouts and sings the greatness of the King. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. Take my life and let it be. All for you and for your glory. Take my life and let it be yours. Take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory. Take my life and let it be yours. We sing glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God forever. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. Lord God, we praise you because you are the promise maker and the promise keeper. Lord, as we're about to sing you, finish what you say you will begin. Lord, most of all, we thank you that you said you would finish it that you would do the work that brings salvation to us, Lord. So, Lord God, we thank you, too, the other, for the other promises you give us and how you will fulfill them. Maybe in time longer than what we think, but you will fulfill your promises as you see in your word in your good time. Promise maker, promise keeper, you finish what you begin. Our provision through the desert, you see it through to the end. You see it through to the end. The Lord our God is 
never faithful, never changing through the ages. From this darkness, you will lead us, and forever we will say, you the Lord our God. the silence in the waiting still we can know you are good all your plans are for your glory yes we can know you are good yes we can know you are good Lord, our God is ever faithful, never changing through the ages. From this darkness, you will lead us, and forever we will say, you the Lord, our God. We won't move without you. We won't move without you. You're the light of all and all that we need. We won't move without you. We won't move without you. You're the light of all and all that we need. The Lord our God is ever faithful never changing through the ages from this darkness you will lead us and forever we will say you're the lord our god and forever we will say you the lord our god and forever we will say you the Lord our God. You the Lord our God. Lord, we thank you, praise you that you are ever faithful. That you never change through the ages. And even though we face darkness, even in this time, you will lead us. Lord, we thank you for your promise that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. Lord, you're more than just a crutch. You're like a stretcher carrying us through this time. So we thank you and praise you, Lord God. Lord, our God is ever faithful, never changing through the ages. From this darkness, we will lead us, and forever we will say, You the Lord our God, and forever we will say, You the Lord our God, and forever we will say, You the Lord our God, You the Lord our God. You, Lord, our God. God, you are an awesome and wonderful God. We thank you and praise you. We thank you that you love us so much to die on the cross. And Lord, as we enter into this Passion Week, each day, Lord, may we focus and meditate upon you remembering the sacrifice you've made for us and give you praise and glory because of it. God, you are truly a wonderful and awesome God. And Lord, throughout this next week, throughout even the rest of this day, Lord, although we do and say, Lord, we want to do it in praise and glory to you. Lord, may our lives be an act of worship to you in all things. For these things we pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. 
just before I pray the benediction upon you as we close, I just want to let you know that this Friday at 10.30 a.m. we'll be going live to do a Good Friday service right here from our living room again. And it'll be a time of worship, of reading through the, the gospel story of what Christ did on the cross, and with a few thoughts as well, too. Hope you're able to join us, and we look forward to this time of worship this Friday, and then following Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, we can bring praise and glory to God again for his sacrifice for us. Let me pray the benediction upon you as we close. Lord God, we thank you so much for this time we've had to worship and to praise your name, to hear from your word, to remember that Palm Sunday 2,000 years ago when you rode into Jerusalem on that donkey, a humble estate place to be on a donkey, and yet you came as people cried, Hosanna. Lord, they rightfully called you Lord. They believe that you're the Messiah. And Lord, you are and were the Messiah. And Lord, we thank you and praise you that you love us so much. Lord God, we pray that you cover us and protect us. May you guide us through the storms of this week. May we see you work in the lives of those around us. And as we converse with each other, whether it be on the internet or through phone, Lord, may again we see you at work in our lives. May you use us to do your awesome work, Lord God. And Lord, next week, may we again bring praise and glory to you, even online, sharing with each other the wonders we've seen you perform. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his faith to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God loves you. Go in peace.